Traders, ladies and gentlemen, nice to see you again after some time, right? It's been, what is it, been a couple of months. Um, those of you that follow me, make sure you follow me um, if you don't already, because um, you would have known, right? You can keep up to date with all my goings on. I'm sure no one cares. Um, I even tried to convince my mum to follow me on Instagram at um, nvforex. So yeah, I even tried to convince my mother to follow me on Instagram. She said, no, I've got better things to do. But hopefully, if you're interested in institutional trading and seeing the sort of stuff you see here today, but on a more kind of intraday basis and catching a bit of banter and stuff like that, make sure you follow me there. At NVForex, I'm on Instagram, I'm very active there. Haven't been on YouTube for a while. Um, I've basically been moving home, um, even though... I was just looking at myself before I started this video and I realized I look like I don't even live in a home, but I do. And I moved to a really nice home and I'll get into all of that in another video, why I've been away, but I'm back, right? And this time, um, hopefully more frequently than ever, I've got some amazing ideas. I want to be more frequent on the channel. Um, before I start, if you haven't seen, I've got a brand new um, kind of one part I guess webinar, um, or whatever you want to call it, it's a one hour free training video. Go and check it out, g7fxfreetraining.com. I'll put the link uh, below. It's an hour of training, it's brilliant. It really is uh, great, and it? When you watch it, you'll realize I've definitely got an intention of sticking around for um, quite a while, so. Um, but anyway, I'm back, and like I said, I'll get into that in another video. Today is all about just giving a really short video about what I've been doing um, since I've come back. Pretty much nothing in terms of changes, right? No changes at all. And I've realized I've put here today's lesson and actually probably what I should have put. And, you know, I'm not one of these guys that likes to go back and edit things and make it look perfect. I really couldn't care less. I'm a trader first and foremost. I love being on YouTube, but I want you to see kind of things in the moment, right? I've put that there, whatever, I'll change it. But I won't change it, I'll write it out. So what I should have put for today's lesson is, um, don't change things, right? I've just realized, I mean, here, this is this is important as well, start questioning everything, and we're gonna get on the charts in a second. Um, and by the way, before I forget, I told you, I don't have these things scripted, I completely forgot. Like and subscribe the video if you like, um, content that I give you. Um, if you don't, still like and subscribe it, right? Still helps, helps get it out there anyway. Um, but no, look, today's lesson I was going to say on a serious note is start questioning everything, but also don't change things, okay? I've been away for um, several weeks, as many of you that follow me on Instagram at NVForex know. Um, I've been moving home and I didn't trade for a few weeks and I just got back into trading about a week and a half ago and nothing's changed as you're going to see. I'm still using exactly the same stuff. I don't change it. I don't know any professional traders who are consistent, who are constantly fiddling with things dramatically. Obviously do change things a little bit as long as they're, you know, order flow based or transaction based. You can change them early in your career in the first few years. But I've been doing this, what now, almost 15 years. So I just don't change things now. I'm happy with what I've got. I've got my kind of style, what I look at. I know it well, as I'm going to show you today. And we're going to do a little bit of analysis. I had a $4,000 today, a dollar day today. Um, fully verified. I'll show you all of that, my accountant, all that usual stuff. Um, and like I said, we're going to have a quick kind of educational overlay to that. And I just wanted to say, before we get onto the charts, um, Sierra chart, and we're going to look at the S&P 500 today. I've heard, and I know, don't like mentioning names, but I have heard a lot of this lifestyle trader um, rhetoric going on recently, because as you may know, I've not been around much, right? So I haven't been running kind of my Facebook and YouTube ads and stuff like that. Don't skip this ad, <laughs> all that stuff. I haven't been running it. I've been watching some of these things, right? And again, look, I never mention names, but I've heard a lot of this undertone of um, people trying to convince you 
that this is a lifestyle, right? And it's not, okay? It's not. I mean, look at the state of me, okay? I, I, you know, and it's not for lack of um, money. I do very well for myself. People know that. Um, it's, it's just that when I'm kind of trading, today's my trading day, and I like to keep my feet on the ground, and I think that's how you need to approach it. And having this lifestyle stuff in your head, Honestly, it's a recipe for disaster, okay? There is no, lifestyle comes afterwards, but you know, someone tells you, hey, you know, you can put your feet up after 10 minutes on the charts and the rest of the day you've got balance and that's how you're gonna achieve it. Complete and utter, not, I've never heard so much rubbish in my life, okay? There is no um, easy way to achieving a good lifestyle. It's hard work. I'm gonna show you that today as well. You will have to put in a lot of hours but do it in the right way okay and if you watch my free webinar i talk about that a lot g7fxfreetraining.com you'll see i'm comparing kind of how institutions approach trading um, in a very structured manner so you know in a kind of over time looking to build your income doing the education as opposed to um, you know trying to get you to execute too quickly and get you Put you in a dangerous position of this mindset that you can achieve an amazing work-life balance from day one and you can't it's gonna be hard right but eventually you can get all of that but to me um, and I've talked a lot about this now so I'll stop but lifestyle is more about um, kind of having this mindset that you're gonna work hard every day and actually you're gonna work ten times harder than what you've ever been used to working that's what to me lifestyle is it's not you know having your mind distracted by oh i'm gonna have the best clothes in the world i'm gonna have the best car i'm gonna have the best this best that honestly even though it looks like it that stuff um ironically is what's going to make you fail right lifestyle in your mind should be i'm gonna have the lifestyle of working every single moment of the day that i have spare i'm gonna put it into trading I understand most people have families and stuff like that and you can't do it 24 7 and obviously you need to sleep but i'm just saying you know when you have time you shouldn't be sitting there thinking oh how can i create space for me so i can chill out and do the things i love that will come much later on what you've got to be thinking is the opposite and i might even do i'm just realizing i'm talking so much i might as well do it might even do a whole youtube video on this later but what you should really be thinking, so important, is how can I not create time to do the things I love? That will come later, right? That's the rewards of putting in the work that you're going to do now. What you should be thinking is, how can I create space now so that I can spend that time educating myself, right? Because that education is what's going to pay off. And that's what, to me, lifestyle is. Create that lifestyle where you're grafting. And it's the opposite of what everyone calls lifestyle right on youtube and everything we see but hey you can have a good lifestyle to me that's not lifestyle lifestyle is hard work so start to change your vision of lifestyle and it, trading will become much easier because you won't be fighting the amount of time and effort you need to put in because you will need to put in um, and i'll come back to this i'm realizing now talking a lot but i'm going to come back to this point because it's really really important and then finally um no 25,000 G7 FX 25k challenge that I launched months ago. Not a single entry. Right? I mean, it's beyond a joke, right? So whatever, it is what it is. Uh, I'm going to keep bashing that point home. You know, People don't show you what they're doing. What on earth? You know, if you want to become a doctor, you're going to learn from a doctor, right? If you want to become a boxer, you're going to learn from a boxer, right? If you want to learn to jump out of a plane you're going to learn from someone who's jumped out of a plane before if you want to learn to trade learn from an institutional trader who shows results otherwise don't know what you're expecting um but anyway i've talked about that a lot 25k just wanted to let you know there's no nothing's changed in fact it's got worse do another video on that completely separately um g Senefix community launches tonight um that's if i ever stop talking on this video to <laughs> get it launched um, honestly, I expected to spend two minutes on this first slide and I ended up talking for ages. But look, I haven't been around for ages, so whatever. 
right? I had a lot to say, so it's all coming out. Um, we're gonna get on the charts in just two seconds. Um, the whole rant's over, the intro's over. Well done, England, last night. Um, great, most dodgiest penalty I've ever seen, but whatever, it's gone against us in the past, so we've had some debatable decisions, but let's be honest, it was a bit of a, no one likes to necessarily win like that, but I guess it evens itself out, right? We've had some dodgy things, and I'm glad the, the lads done well, looking forward to Sunday, and I actually remember 1996, like it was yesterday when we were beaten by Germany in the semi-finals, that took me years to get over. Um, so yeah, it's nice to um, see the lads do well. Let's get on the charts, guys, so we can look at the $4,000 day and we can also um, get into some education. Okay, everyone. So yeah, finally, we're on the charts. Uh, we got there in the end. Um, and I promise the next videos I do, I'll keep the intro short. But um, yeah, we're here. We're on the charts. Hopefully, I'm not blocking anything. I don't think I am. I'm just there in the corner. So this is today's S&P 500. And in fact, um, as ever, let me show you my, um, let's switch on the order fills. So you can see today's fills. Um, we're gonna go, you can see slightly different um, style of execution today to what you might have seen me do in the past, um, but still very um, profitable. And let me just show you my, so there you go, my live account, $4,000 today, um, okay, and I'm also going to just show you kind of, you know, I want to show people, it's not cherry picking, I think it's really important that you have the confidence to know that I'm not just showing you this day because it happens to be $4,000, I'll show you since I've come back, um, don't think anyone shows this stuff. So that was yesterday, today's Thursday, uh, $4,000, yesterday was about a break even day, you can see it there. Um, on my live account and then I had a decent day on Tuesday um, some shorts I think it was about six or seven hundred dollars on that day um, okay Monday I didn't trade right okay uh, which was a bank holiday so you can see it there that little short day there Friday I also didn't trade Mrs. took me to um, was it Ikea or somewhere doing some furniture shopping <laughs> So I couldn't trade on Friday, which was um, a really nice day, actually, um, as you can see. And then last Thursday was a fairly decent day. Again, I think it was about maybe $600 on that day, five, $600 or whatever. Um, Wednesday, there you go, another, I think that was a 1K day, pretty decent day there. And then Tuesday and there again. Pretty decent solid day and then uh, the Monday there I didn't trade All right so you can see totally open book every single trade over the last two weeks okay so it's not just kind of showing you what I wanted to show you I just got around to basically doing the video today so it is what it is another day you might get a different type of day and a different type of style but actually it's quite good because um, you're seeing a slightly different execution style. So as always, right, we're going to talk about context and actually the S&P is screaming higher right now, um, which is, was to be expected. As you can see, I've been buying it all day. Um, it just was accumulating a lot of orders um, near the bottom. I'm going to show you why that was happening. Um, so as we know, the S&P has, you know, in terms of transactions, driving price, right? What drives price? So you've got price here. What are these transactions, right? If no one wants to buy something, the price ain't gonna go up, okay? It isn't all that junk. I've said it before and I'm gonna say it until I'm blue in the face, okay? If you think your squiggly line is making this price go up, you're dreaming, okay? Really, I don't know the polite, I'm trying to think of the politest way to say this. You need to wake up and smell the coffee, okay? Ain't, it's this, right? It's actual people buying and selling. You know this. Think of a property, right? If you had a property, um, draw the world's worst windows. I probably won't buy that property because the windows are awful. But if you're going to buy a property, right? And well, there's property for sale. You go to an auction and no one puts their hand up to buy it. Is the price going to magically go up? 
No, well, don't think that that's what's happening on a chart, okay? It only goes up because people want to buy it. They have their reasons for doing it. Um, in my opinion, majority of the time, that's because they're watching other people's actions. I know from my, obviously I worked in institutions and that's kind of what people are looking at. Um, you know, help using other transactions to kind of determine what other people's reasons for buying and selling are, but it ain't, you know, all that stuff on your retail chart. It is transaction. So anyway, the point is you want to look and see where are these blocks of transactions happening. We can see it here. There are other concentrations where obviously there's been high interest, but we kind of know it's in this area. So let me just mark that area. Um, if I can get this to work. Yep. There. So roughly... Right, this region, you can see there was a lot of people buying and selling. Can you see it here? Okay, heavy interest, right? So no coincidence. That I also had a lot of interest in this area. Also like the fact, and it's what I'm looking for. Sorry, I don't know what happened. Also like the fact, and it's what I'm um, looking for, is where are people likely to be trapped? We have just had the biggest move, right? Look what's happened. This is why I say, uh, what did I say? Today's lesson, start questioning. You need to start questioning everything, right? You need to think outside the box. That's what makes trading hard. A lot of people are in denial. They want indicators or all that garbage to tell them what to do. It doesn't work. You need to do it for yourself, okay? Obviously, it helps if you've got the right contextual tools like order flow and transactional data to help you kind of key off Ultimately, you need to think about what is the market trying to achieve or do around these areas. Where has it come from, right? So the market kind of opened there in that region. Sorry, I don't know why the pen is playing up a little bit. Um, apologies for that. Yep, so the market opened up in that area there. And sorry, just gonna have to pop with this till I sort it out for next time. I don't know why it's playing around. So market opened up there, and what's it done? In fact, let's open this up a bit. Okay, so what's the market actually done? Right, it's opened up there, right? And you can see it there. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, there we go, sorted itself out. Sorry, I don't like editing these videos, so I'm not gonna cut that bit out, but it's what it is. Um, so yeah, the markets. Okay guys, sorry about that. I did have to restart my computer. The pen was completely playing up. Um, I was forced into it, otherwise it would have just been a disastrous video. Um, so I restarted it, but we're back. Everything works, um, back to normal. I think the pen's on my side again so we opened up here as we said we pushed down into kind of the area we were expecting to test right so we opened up uh, in this area now i actually went for it straight away we'd already tested it overnight um you can see why i say um, the educational kind of point is to push yourself to really think outside the box right there's no indicator going to do this for you you've got to really start to think you know, what's the market trying to achieve? Has it achieved it already? In this instance, in my opinion, the market was trying to test this area to see kind of what have the buyers got? Are they still around? Are they sticking around? So that was already done. So I was happy to get in. I got out. Um, I did kind of expect this move to happen slightly earlier. That's why I was getting quite aggressive in these areas. When I say aggressive, I don't mean in terms of leverage. I mean in terms of aggressiveness in terms of the price. I was willing to take a bit more of an aggressive price, um, a worse price, but in small size. So what you can't see here is small size. And then I was getting more aggressive in terms of leverage, but I counted it with better price. It's always a trade-off, right? I'm not going to get aggressive at um, worse prices, I'm going to get aggressive at better prices, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to hit the market. So I'm still hitting the market here in small size, but what you can't see here is these transactions were in clips of two each. These were clips of one. Okay, same here. This whole area was in clips of uh, one. 
and then most of these were clips of two okay so getting ultra aggressive um i kind of felt like okay what happened then is we're kind of getting into this range over here you can see so i wanted this move really want is a strong word you know whatever if it happens it happens it doesn't but obviously expecting um there we go the pen deciding to play up again but i'm not going to stop kind of expecting this move to happen um this move here um to happen earlier on in the session and it didn't um so kind of had to rethink right what's actually happening and that's when i started to dawn on me or it started to dawn on me that maybe this area is starting to turn into a bit of a range and potentially we might not see it until the overnight session right so point being that i kind of had to adjust whilst i was going on and again no indicators going to do that for you um i kind of felt that i was happy to get aggressive because i know a lot of people are going to be thinking well why were you happy to get aggressive in these areas apologies about the pen i'm not going to reboot my pc again but um, why were you happy to get aggressive in these areas? Well, the main reason is that I kind of expected these buyers, their nerves to be tested, okay? And this is why I also said at the start that, um, you know, part of today's lesson is about getting you to really think, right? Think outside the box. I can't remember what I put on the first slide, but it was something like think outside the box or um, really get out of your comfort zone because no indicator, there is no indicator that's really gonna be like, test the seller's nerves indicator. Can you see all that stuff is complete and utter garbage? Honestly, it belongs in the dustbin, okay? And I know people get annoyed at me for saying it, but hey, I've produced audited results for a year. I show my live account, so I can say if I want to, um, because it's true. All that stuff is garbage, it's just for people that are lazy. You need to be able to think, like, if the market's coming down here, why is it coming down here? What's the order flow like? Is it coming down aggressively? How is it coming down? Um, what's the area it's coming down into? Well, it's coming down into an area that I've already got in mind. So for me, it's kind of like there's nothing for me to be scared of, right? If anything, I'm going to be getting more aggressive and I'm thinking, why is the market here? I don't give a monkeys if there's some indicator there. It's nothing to do with that, okay? It's these sellers are testing the early buyers how do i know there's buyers in the morning well i was one of them okay so this is the dynamic and this is how trading works um so hopefully that was useful you know i realized i've talked a lot my pen wasn't working a bit of a disastrous first youtube video back but i'm gonna get this sorted and probably get a new tablet um but yeah that's that's basically why i was buying in that area i did try several times you know and then kind of when we got to this area here the order flow wasn't very strong i couldn't really sense that buyers were desperate to make it go up and lo and behold combined with what's been going on throughout the day right you've really got to be keeping on your toes thinking what's been happening throughout the day and i realized okay there's a bit of a range day going on here and maybe now's not the right time so took my four thousand dollars um you know, easy to say in hindsight, yeah, should have got in here and who knows, right? Could have just ended up doing that until the overnight session. It's nice to see it go up. In fact, I look at it a different way. A lot of people live with regret and say, oh my God, it's gone without me. I don't. I feel like, yeah, do you know what? The market did what I wanted it to do. Okay, I didn't get the timing exactly right. Um, managed the trades pretty well in the sense that um, these were very, very light entries and these were more aggressive entries. Uh, my cost basis was good, um, took some good money out of the market today, and fine. What I thought was going to happen, happened. So, you know, great. And it is what it is. Next time I'll catch it, and it will go at the right kind of moment that I want it to. So I think really that's enough for today. Um, hopefully that was useful. I'm going to try and do a lot more of these videos. Don't forget to follow me. Um, like and subscribe if you like institutional trading in my opinion is the only way anyone's ever made money doing it properly um yeah it's tough but um you can do it too don't forget my new um, webinar one hour g7fxfreetraining.com like and subscribe and then just finally before i go don't forget to follow me on instagram i don't know if i'll be able to write it because my pen is 
um, playing up. Envy, Forex. There you go, the pen's playing up. But follow me on Instagram, see you on the other side, and I'll get another video to you um, soon. Have a great day, guys.